So Jason and I are going to delve into uh, some pretty good stuff tonight. I'm excited to talk with you, Jason, about cancel culture oh, it's and uh, critical theories, all that. But before we do, I did want to make sure I mentioned, if, if uh, people don't know that, Jason Whitaker actually has a blog. Yeah, thank and you so I much. Will, I will put a link to your blog in the video description of this video. So that people can go and check out your blog. Looks like you're talking about Ruth right now. Yep. So um, I named it Blogging Through the Bible. And it is just my attempt to keep God's word in front of me um, in light of the world that we came out of. I was I was blogging before. So if you look in the archives, you'll see some of my other content and conversations when I was a school teacher. However, in 2020, I was like, man, I really need to be encouraged. I need to be edified. I need, it, I need to be lifted up. So I started just taking a one, one chapter at a time or one section at a time through the Bible. And now I'm looking at the book of Ruth. So um, feel free to jump in. I'd love to hear some comments. I'd love to hear thoughts on that. Um, I try to keep it edifying and encouraging. I did go off the rails a couple of weeks ago. Uh, uh, I'm sure you can't imagine that I rant every now and then. So I uh, ran off the rails a little bit. Can't even imagine it. But um, the rest of it is all just uh, just truly just a Bible study going through the Word. So I'd love to have you come, come by. Check it out. That is awesome. All right. So definitely check out okay. Jason's blog. And I heard, too, that you are on Gab, right? Yeah, man. Just checking out some different uh, platforms. I just figured out I would uh, check it out. It's actually pretty neat, man. It's it's a, it's a mishmash of uh, Facebook, Twitter, if you will. So it's kind of like a conglomeration of those. But just you know, good conversations out there, decent people. I figure more people there, the better. It'll, it'll um, actually it's kind of leads into what we're talking about today, like having diversity of conversation and not just being in an echo chamber. So I mm-hmm. think the more voices there will help uh, lessen the echo and allow mm-hmm. some real conversations to grow but no very in- insightful some some good people there so i'm at mr j Witt over there gab if you're there try to get tim over there too i think i'm gonna get Tim. yeah I, I haven't gotten there yet but uh and now i'm gonna pitch for myself uh okay let's get my uh my <laughs> as you can tell i'm debuting my new hat tonight toronto blue jays linda from canada got me this hat and these nice. here are the hats that I have so far checked off. So if anybody wants to help me uh, complete my collection of Major League Love Baseball it. hats, these are the hats that I still need, the ones that are not checked off. And uh, this hat here, uh, this is Toronto Blue Jays. Uh, it is, I have to say, I'm a Phillies fan, and... And this is really saying a lot. The Phillies were defeated by the Blue Jays in the oh, 1993 no. World Series. So I have good reason to to maybe hold something against the Blue Jays. But I just want to say, honestly, out of all the hats I, I have so far, this thing is so nice. Like the, the detail of, of the Blue Jays emblem with the Blue Jay and the maple leaf. It's just really an awesome hat. So... I, I, I just wanted to put that out there. But the other nice thing about wearing a, a Canadian hat, Jason, is that as we talk about all this stuff happening, uh, maybe it'll, it'll help me not to uh, not to get canceled if I'm saying something. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Well, Tim, I hate to tell you, um, the floating, the sliding scale of cancelology, um, actually today... Anybody wearing a Blue Jays hat is canceled. So I hate oh, to tell man. you this, man. Yeah, it could. Yeah. It, it, there, the there, are base, there are baseball fans that are probably tempted to cancel me depending on what <laughs> hat I'm wearing, right? <laughs> Tim, I'm worried about you that you said the Blue Jays beat the Phillies in 93 and you're still salty about that. I'm actually kind of sad. <laughs> for you. I was like, Tim, 27 years ago, man, let it go. Okay. Let it go, well, make him up then you don't understand how rare it is for the Phillies to get to the World Series. <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, and anyway, that's fair enough. I'll, I'll accept that. I don't fully understand it, but... We're going to get started. Let's dive uh, into this cancel Talking culture. about cancel culture here. And um, so what I what I want to do to start off is, is just 
you know, ask you, Jason, what, it, what would you say is cancel culture? Uh, how, how do you think of cancel culture? I'm going to give a, I'm going to give a, I hate to say textbook. I'm going to give a textbook definition that I understand from my research is basically acknowledging that someone or an entity has a viewpoint or an opinion that's contrary to the, the majority or another person's opinion. And because of that, one party is no longer wants to support or provide um, benefit to that initial party. So a perfect example would be if I was canceling Tim, I would tell everybody, don't go to Tim's website. Don't go to Tim's store. We should, because he is, you know, he wears a Blue Jays hat. And we've already said that Blue Jay fans today are on cancel culture. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's just, it's a, that's my, my, for lack of a better term, my textbook answer. I'm going to save all of my feelings about it for, for the next portion. That's good. I, I actually, uh, in one of the articles you sent, and I will put links to the articles that we show here uh, in the video description in the video description, but uh, this is from the Christian Post, and uh, it's talking about what does the Bible say about cancel culture, and they say here, cancel culture has been described as removing of support for public figures in response to their objectionable behavior or opinions. <clears throat> this can include boycotts or refusal to promote their work. I would say it also can include people being ostracized, uh, fired from their jobs, uh, they can be boycotted on so social media. So basically, they lose their their status oh, in, yes, in culture. Absolutely. I mean, it it can be very severe. Um, yeah, I don't think I don't think the Christian Post article went far enough. I don't think we talked about like weaponizing the culture, the cancel culture. Like it can literally. Uh, we're going to talk about it in a moment, but I mean, it's, I think they were too light on it, truthfully. I mean, it, there's zero grace. There's no room for growth and development. There's no room for, all I can say is I thank God we didn't have the internet when I was in middle school and high school. Who knows? I mean, who knows? I mean, it, and it's just, there's, there's no grace. There's no room to grow. You, you can't have varying thoughts. You can't anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Yeah, and as a good example, in the beginning of this article, they talk about this uh, Boeing employee. Uh, he was the communications chief, Neil uh -huh. Golightly. And he was basically, he, he, he resigned because of something he wrote in an article nearly 33 years ago that said women should not serve in combat. That really gives you an idea of what we're talking about here. Not just that you did something yesterday that was offensive but that you did something maybe decades ago and people yeah. are still saying you need to lose your job or you know we need to boycott you and and truthfully i, I know I'm, i know i don't want to jump into like the but cancel culture as a as a the way that we're using it today can only get worse and people who are using it today um will eventually get canceled themselves because I mean, the, the standards that we're using, AKA if you wrote an article 33 years ago about a topic that 33 years ago was the proper topic. And I mean, was the proper understanding to say now that you would lose your job and clearly it wasn't a, you know, he wasn't a burger flipper. So this is a serious job that he'd worked probably a long time to secure in a position and he loses it because of something that happened three decades ago. I mean, that's, that's profound. So we have to think like what's going to happen in 33 years from now, you know, how will the, the mindsets change then because the people that are yielding the cancel culture weapon now in 33 years, they're going to get canceled. So it's moving you, quickly. It's moving yes. quickly. The, like you said, I mean, I know you were joking about Blue Jays fans today being canceled, but it's kind of like that. It almost seems if if you're if you're not ready for it, it's like all of a sudden there will be this new thing that's considered offensive, and a lot of people are blindsided by it. 
Um, but I think it speaks, and I really want to hit on this tonight, probably repeatedly, to um, a cultural, uh, really a kind of a power shift that's taking place. I mean, these are these are powerful forces at work in our culture right now that mm -hmm. are affecting people's lives. And, you know, for people to get fired for something, and I think a good example to throw another one out there is there was, a, there was I think, an engineer at Google who tried to give an explanation as to why there are more men working at Google than women. Mm -hmm. And his opinion that he shared with people was, uh, <laughs> it, it just, it wasn't considered politically correct. And uh, he, yeah. he faced big backlash for that. I believe he got fired for that. It's so. very interesting. So, I mean, this is what's going to happen. And if we're not careful, I mean, we're all going to eventually be canceled, but I'm going to say that for my final, mm -hmm. final comments, but. Okay. Yeah. I, I think another uh, article here, just to put this up here for people to look at is uh, from Christianity Today. Uh, Jason shared this with me. And this was interesting. The Old Testament calls out cancel culture. And this is trying to be bring the Bible into it. So this is obviously from a Christian perspective that we, mm -hmm. we as Christians sh should be extra wary of that mentality of trying to um, eradicate things, especially in history, that yep. just are maybe complex. And and because we want to look at the past, and I think that's what this article brings out. We want to look at the past. For example, our founding fathers, that we either want them to be perfect or they, or they must be villains. And the truth is when you yes. look at the past, you see that people have their faults, but they still have admirable yeah. qualities. And they, they use the example of David. No, I'm Go sorry. Ahead. I mean, we could look at Saul in the New Testament. We could look at Peter. We could look at so many people whom God used, because guess what? God uses sinners, because guess what? We're all sinners. We're all flawed. None of us are perfect. And let's, let's remove that. So this whole cancel idea has a false expectation that people are going to be perfect or that situation will be perfect or that any of this. And that we have the right to even judge that, well, Tim can't, well, God can't use Tim because he wears a Blue Jays hat. Who, who, who are we? Who are we again? And we need to, we need to properly look at our situation. But again, cancel culture is a thing of, of secularism is a thing of the pagans is not something that's why it is kind of difficult to find good articles about cancel culture because it's not even something Christian like for the most part now we're addressing it we're we're trying to you know navigate it but really you can tell this is not something that this is not something germane to Christianity is actually anti-Christ it's not anything remotely Christian even well, when we well, excommunicate. The, the, the interesting thing is that they use the example of uh, Marcion, who um, mm -hmm. it says here Marcion, Marcionism is a heresy. And basically he was trying mm -hmm. to alter the history of the Bible, you know, to, to take certain things it's... out of the Bible, alternating history, right? Mm -hmm. Like trying to, trying to revise it for his own purposes, things that didn't fit his value system and his worldview. And uh, that's not the Bible that Christians hold to. The Christians hold to a Bible that depicts people in all of their good ways and also in their faults. And the reality is the Bible is depicting the, the truth that God uses flawed humans. He, he forgives us, he redeems us, and he uses us even though we are clearly not perfect. So, you know, yes, I agree and with you. It is not a Christian uh mentality to just uh do what we're seeing today go ahead i was no i was i was actually looking i want to make sure I, I had it correctly i was looking up marcion as a heresy i want to make sure i understood exactly what it was and it was the um marcion heresy of the second and third century that rejected the old testament and deny the incarnation of God in Christ Jesus as a human i think we i, I remembered it as being the 
um, rejection of the Old Testament. Because again, the Old Testament has all these terrible stories in it. I'm really doing a full Bible study through the book, through the Old Testament with uh, this book called the, the Unfolding, which is a um, look for Christ through the Old Testament. And there are some, there are some stories in the Old Testament, man, that short of you saying that, short of you knowing that God is using this for his redemptive plan, you're like, what is the purpose of this story? Why in the world is this here? So I, I understand that, but we don't take it out. We don't cancel God's word because we don't, we don't necessarily like it or it doesn't agree with our, um, our worldviews. So, all right. All right. Can you see this one? A Christian oh, response to cancel culture. Mm -hmm. Um, so I actually haven't read this one other than I did notice it has some main points here. Be wise about your words, beware of malice, believe in redemption. Uh, did you have any comment on this particular article? No, I think this article again, just shows that cancel culture is not something that is germane to Christianity. And so in here, they're actually just trying to teach you how to navigate, how not to have somebody turn turn on you and cancel you. Um, I think they're they're giving good sound wisdom here, um, but I think sadly there is no there are no rules for engagement in cancel culture. Every, mm -hmm. I mean, there's literally no rules. Mm -hmm. um, and, and trust me, if you think there are rules, just stay still long enough. Next week, those rules will be different. Um, and this look back last year, what were the rules for cancel culture then? They're different. So I think even trying to, at the end of the day, I think if we stop playing, where I wanted to go was, if we stop playing the game with them, no, you're not canceling me. I'm a whole grown adult. I'm, no, I'm not, no, I'm not going to play your game with you. If we stop playing the game with them and stop acting like, because really cancel culture is mean girls for adults. So if you've watched the girl, the movie Mean Girls, my daughter's like watching the movie Mean Girls. Um, it's just for adults. That's all that is. You can't sit at the cool table with us, man, man, man. I'm sorry. I'm an adult. <laughs> and we're not going to play those games. If you don't want to buy my services, if you don't want to read my blog, that's one thing. But you ain't canceling me. I'm not going to go suck my thumb and go sit in the corner because you don't want to. Get, get out of here. So I think for Christians and for others, Stop playing a game with them. Just say no, uh, no. If, if you say if you're gonna go on social media and say Jason was a bad person back 33 years ago, which by the way I probably was, um, 33 years ago, and here's something he said when he was in in middle school. Okay, fine. Show me what you said in middle school. Let's let's play this game to the fullest. Otherwise, miss me with that foolishness. And we're gonna look at today with today's lenses, and we'll look at. 14 years ago or 33 years ago in the context of where it was, not just trying to play this game that everything should be the exact same based upon today's standards, which are not the case. Mm. All right. Yeah. And I have to say uh, that as a Christian, you know, m my views all my life have never really fit in to the broader culture. Uh, you know, I have had so many experiences in my life where what I believe didn't fit in. And I, you know, there's always been a certain level of unpopularity uh, okay. with being a Christian in my own experience, even though I've been in church and I've had plenty of people accept me. Uh, and there have certainly been secular people that have accepted me, but there are plenty of people that haven't liked what I have to say. So I think as Christians, we should always be kind of, you know, expecting a certain amount of resistance but what we're seeing today is fascinating because this is really, um, this isn't just verbal resistance. And this is just isn't like a temporary kind of, when we're talking about cancel culture, we're talking about that, that first word is cancel. Like they are trying to actually cancel people. Mm -hmm. That's a very serious kind of a consequence that they're bringing about. And I, I think for us, if we realize that we are in the world, but not of the world, we recognize that we are sojourners here, that we are foreigners and, and we're not, this is not our home. So let's just prepare ourselves and maybe even collaborate and work together because eventually we know we're going to get canceled. 
eventually what we preach, what we, I'm sorry, what we think as it relates to who Christ is, is going to get us canceled. I mean, following the logic of this and, and who knows what that might look like? Who knows what that'll actually, what, it, what, how it'll manifest itself. But at the end of the day, you do realize that everything that Christ teaches and taught is countercultural. He would have been canceled. If we bring Christ today, he would be canceled. Well, truthfully, they canceled him. They're they trying. canceled him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they did cancel him, but thank yeah. God he rose again. Yeah. But to that point, there's, there's, you know, we go on. What did Jesus teach that would be accepted today? <laughs> and please don't give me that, that faux uh, social justice, Jesus was a, a revolutionary argument either. Miss me with that. Um, there's nothing that Jesus taught that would be acceptable today. I mean, he's, he's, he's in trouble. He would be in trouble by today's standards. Yeah, I agree. So there's a sense in which we have to accept that that's just, you know, always going to be a reality in this world. We're not of the world and mm -hmm. don't be surprised if the world hates, hates you, you as Whoa. Jesus talked about. Right. But, um, I, I do want to pivot a little bit of this conversation uh, to talk about critical theory. And within that is critical race theory. I showed a video uh, on my channel today or a clip of a video. I'll see if I can pull it up here. So this is an interview uh, with Helen Pluckrose. And she wrote this book, uh, which is about critical theories, but it, they call it cynical theories. And I actually started reading this book. She's not a Christian. And if you watch that interview with her, I'll leave a link to it. I just want to, you know, again, put the, uh, just put the, the, the warning there that there is some strong language in that video. These are not Christians that are talking, but I, I think what she does is give insight into why the culture has the value system that it has today that is canceling people. And it is a very, like I said, it has very serious consequences. And that's what she's talking about here. She's saying that it comes from critical theory. And within that would be critical race theory. Uh, so part of the title here is how activist scholarship made everything about race. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> Making everything about race, making yep. everything about gender everything. and identity and why yep. this harms everybody. So if you wanna understand where this comes from, She's really, I think, doing a great job of, of giving some insight as to how we're getting to this place. And it is even affecting Christians. Um, Christians, if they're not careful, can be affected by critical theory. Um, yep. So critical theory, just to kind of define it for people, really takes postmodernism, that whole... Uh, idea of really deconstructing the world uh, that came about during the uh, Enlightenment and kind of just really deconstructing all of that. But what people have thought, she says, is that they, they thought postmodernism died, but it didn't. It used to be in academia, and now it's actually, we're in a phase that she calls applied postmodernism. So we're taking those philosophies of the 60s, and we are now applying them. And when we talk about applying them, you can see how this plays out today. That means re-examining re everything that we think and believe in America, for example, and putting it through this lens, this critical lens. And that's why there's a redefinition of words. That's very intentional. And you and I have talked a lot about this that they are actually redefining words. And that's what this whole philosophy is about. It's about redefining our reality. They believe that people operate based on uh, what she calls discourses yep. or, or narratives. So if you can change the language, you can basically alter uh, people's perceptions of reality. You can control the culture by controlling the language is essentially what's going on. So that's really a great explanation as to what we talked about last time, I think it was. Why are they calling us white supremacists? That's very intentional. They are redefining that phrase because it is about altering 
everybody's framework by which they operate. So what they're really trying to do ultimately in some sense is create an entire revolution. Yes. And keep in mind, critical theory was a study was basically looking at there were the oppressed and the oppressors. Mm -hmm. That's critical theory. Critical race theory was that the oppressed and oppressors, there was a the oppressors, which are white people, and the oppressees, or those who were being oppressed, were everybody else, all other people groups. And that's why, part and parcel to why we see so much, as, as she says right here, everything's about race. Because it, it, it now we can, we're, we're looking at it through the critical theory eyes and a critical theory lens. So, so now everything that critical race lens, forgive me, is, is being applied, as you said, to everything. And it, I mean, when you hear that climate control or climate change is a social justice issue and a, 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 a racial issue, you're like, wait, hold on. <laughs> but I mean, that's, that's to the point of lunacy at this point. I thought we were bad before, but now we're at the point where the weather is racist. Mm -hmm. Come on, yeah. get out of well, here. Well, so. what's really important about this is to realize that it is absolutely an entire philosophy, uh, <laughs> worldview, and even if you want to yes. call it a, um, it, it has a religious aspect to it. It's, a, mm -hmm. it's an entire value system and way of looking at the world. And that's, by the way, why they talk about people becoming woke. Because before you buy into this, you don't think of people as being racist. Like you and me here talking is, is people of, of two different backgrounds, two different ethnicities. We're talking. But, but if you're woke, you could still look at our conversation as being racist because yeah. you're able to see something that, you know, if you don't see it, you, you just haven't gotten to that point of, of enlightenment. I mean, at this moment on the screen, Tim, your picture's above mine, so you're oppressing me. <laughs> I mean, even on the screen, man, come on, man. I love, up. I love Helen Pluckrose to go back to her. The example yes. she uses about two people walking into a store and one of them white, one of them black. And if the store yes. owner goes to the white person first, he's racist because he obviously he's serving the white person first. Yep. If he goes to the black person first, then he's racist because he's obviously suspicious of the black person in the store. That's why you went to the. So she says, if you're looking for racism, if that's the lens by which you're looking at everything, you'll see it everywhere. Watch this. And I, I, I meant to put this in my notes, but I didn't give it to you. So I want to make sure you didn't run off with it because I thought it was so good. Critical race theory is basically making you the hammer and you're looking for a nail. Everything is a nail. That's it. Like you're just literally looking for something to pound every everywhere you go, grocery store, supermarket, library, church, wherever you're looking for a nail to pound because you're the hammer. I, yeah, I want to talk. Cool. I do want to unpack a little bit more about the the video, um, yeah. and I agree with you. I do think um, <laughs> you said it to me. I was like, man, this is long. I don't want to watch this, but it was actually really good. And <laughs> Like I said in my notes, like it was really good. And if you are a Christian and you're like, I don't understand critical race theory. I don't understand how people think like this. I don't, if you don't get it, this is a fantastic video because it explains it and they put no, no religious spins on it or anything like that. You know, they're not quoting scripture or anything of that nature. These, they, it's just a secular review and you can hear it and you're like, wow. Now, to the point that I told you earlier, I think she realizes that CRT is a religion. <laughs> she does realize, because by the way, I do believe that it's a cult. It's a cult um, and, and it's a false religion. And I believe she realizes that. And she mentioned something. She mentions the secularization um, of ideas 
And she's basically, in, in my notes, I said that she's basically calling CRT a religion. She seems to know that it has religious ideas of uh, uh, there's original sin in here. There's a way of salvation. There's a, um, a way of repentance in, in CRT. CT. There's, a, there's a way of, um, there's a, a way of creating a, um, a, a salvation or justification. So she realizes that there's Christian or rather religious ideas in critical race theory, but she just wasn't willing to say it. And also, I just think that this is a great way of looking at it without looking or having scripture salt and peppered in to confuse the matter. This is purely just a secular discussion about CRT and where it's leading and how it's gotten to where it is. I think it's actually worth worth watching. What I would add to to that too, as far as it being secular, is you know that it's serious. <laughs> if she's liberal, like she oh, she, and when I say oh, liberal, yeah. she's even on the left yeah. as a liberal, and she's worried, and and has created a an organization to help people who are facing yes. the aftermath of cancel culture. <laughs> so you know, it's gotten pretty serious. Wait, when a leftist, she calls herself a yeah, leftist. She does. She yeah. does. It's not me being and, and Tim being negative about her. She calls herself a leftist. Yeah. And she has actually had to form an organization to protect people from her people. <laughs> that is insane. That right there, that right there, I forgot about that. Thank you. Did I not? That must be in my notes somewhere, Tim. You must have copied them. <laughs> um, but yeah, like when you have to build an organization to protect you, your people from the culture that you that you supported or that has come from you, because this is not a Christian. Cancer culture is not Christian. I can give you that for sure. Um, yeah, so there's there's no, we don't have to worry about that. There's no way you can tell, bring that back and say it was a Christian idea. So that was a pagan idea to start with. So you had to create something to defend yourself yourself from your own ideas that's crazy mm. yeah and she talks about in in the book uh kind of what you said earlier that critical theory came out of the idea of oppression and mm -hmm. uh i think the first um studies that were done had to do with colonialism mm -hmm. and and the idea of you know people that were the the uh, dominant class versus the subordinate class but it's like it's exactly what you said before when when it's used as a hammer then it's always looking for a Man. for a nail and and actually her criticism is that from her standpoint she calls herself a progressive we have made progress and i actually have to agree with her there are there are some areas where we could say we've made progress um, now, I don't agree with all of her views, obviously, but what critical theory does is it says the problems of the past are almost eternal. <laughs> you yes. know what I mean? It's like it wants to take the past and, and you know, take that filter and put it onto the present because it really believes that colonialism um, and, and things – of, a, of an oppressive nature are part and pa parcel of modernism. So Correct. critical theory is basically trying to eradicate what it perceives as the outgrowth of modernism. And again, it's very revolutionary. And, uh, and, and, it, and it, you know, you can see that. Go ahead. I, was, I would always add, keep in mind, I think you said it backwards. We try to take the lens of today and put it on the past and, and judge the past with today's lenses because again mm -hmm. 10 15 20 years ago certain things that are being canceled today we did not view them as such but now we look back at them and say oh well tim wore that blue jays hat back in 20 uh 20 2021 so he must have been blah 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 so mm -hmm. well no we just changed our standard <laughs> and decided that blue jays hats were really bad but tim wearing a blue jay hat back then was not bad. Kind of like what we, we said about the Confederate flag. Yeah. Now, granted, I'm not saying that the Confederate flag doesn't carry a level of baggage with it, but mm -hmm. to say that the General Lee car and the Dukes of Hazzard was a racist car racing into racism, 
because no, that's not what it was at all. Stop it. Now, now, if they rebooted the the Dukes of Hazard, should they do that? I would probably steer clear of that one. Probably shouldn't even redo the Dukes of Hazard. But my point is, we shouldn't look at the past and judge it with our current. Yes. So, ideals. so I think we've talked about this before because I think this happened in our previous conversation where I put it in one direction and you said it's the other. I I think it's a conflation of the present with the past. That's why it goes both ways. So for example, what I'm saying is they take th they take sciences that developed in colonial times. Mm -hmm. They were criticisms of colonialism when we're not even living in colonialism and they're trying to use those criticisms for today. But you're right, it does go both ways. With that whole mindset comes reading back into the past values of the present that don't even apply directly to the pla to the right. past. So yeah, it's a conflation of the two. I totally, totally get what you're saying there. Uh, I guess, you know, I don't know if you have a lot more to say, but uh, I, I did have maybe, you know, at least one concluding thought uh, that I wanted to share. What did you want to say? Well, I just had an, an encouragement, if you will, for Christians who are if, going back to our discussion about um, cancel culture. And in light of, I mean, fearing that you'll be canceled or thinking like, what do I do if I get canceled? I, I think truthfully, I think for believers in Christ, we should one, evaluate, are we leaning too heavily on the world in the first place? We have to be here. We have to live, we have to eat, we have to, I mean, the Lord has kept us here for a reason. But that being the case, are we leaning too heavily on the world and the world systems? Do I want too much from the world and not more from my God? Um, d doing a quick survey through um, the book of Acts, which lots of people like to use the book of Acts to determine how they do church and so forth. There were about six things I found that the disciples discussed in the book of Acts. They talked about Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God, the word of God, the gospel, forgiveness of sins and repentance. That was basically the six things that the disciples of Christ talked about. And those are the things that got them canceled. <laughs> so at least they leaned in on their canceling, if you will, using a modern term. They leaned in onto their canceling and they made sure that if I'm going to get my head cut off, if I'm going to get ostracized from my community, it's going to be because of the things of Christ, not because I was just being cantankerous in society or I was just being a stick in the mud. I'm going to be preaching the gospel. So that's what got them canceled, if you will. So that was that. That's awesome. Thank you. And you know what? That's kind of a great, you know, thought to be going out with. You know, let's just make sure we're, as Christians, um, focused on the right things. That's that's one of my concerns is blending Christianity with and you've if you've watched my videos you know it's always a concern like let's not blend christianity with things that are not you know our core principles as, as christians you know what defines us as christians we go back to the scripture and i think that critical race theory critical theories in general um it is a religion from academia it came out of academia it is a it has very it has a value system by which we judge people and it is a way of looking at the world that and this is the real point i hope pe people i think know this but it is really taking root in our culture and i'm afraid you know it's it's fine if if the culture goes that way i mean i don't want it to but if the culture goes that way the culture is always you know, going off in wrong directions. Amen but we there. as Christians really need to make sure we don't buy into non-biblical philosophies and blend that into uh, a Christian perspective. That That's a caution. So I would, I would say to keep ourselves on point, think of Christians in other countries. Uh, mm -hmm. I've been interacting with some Christians online who live in, cool. live in Kenya. And it's, it's just, it's awesome because it, it brings you back to the basics. They see the scripture and I feel such a kinship with them. I can't imagine any one of those Kenyans reading the Bible and coming up with critical race theory. <laughs> I, I, and calling me racist. 
I, I, no argument for me. I agree with you. I'm only going to, in order to pick a fight down in the comment section, I'm only going to change a slight point that you made. Um, you said that um, critical theory comes from academia. I disagree. Critical race theory comes from hell. That's, <laughs> that's a doctrine of demons. I got you. There, there you go. That's it. Yeah. That's the only thing I want to change. It's like, that's a doctrine of the devil. Like, and, and you made the great point. Our brothers and sisters read the scriptures. They would never have come up with critical theory. Uh, well, there's no way. But Well, Satan uses oh, all yeah, kinds of things. And he uses he even people's intelligence and twists it. I love the quote from a man uh, who um, for a time was atheist came back to to a belief in God and he said there are some forms of stupidity one has to be highly intelligent to achieve yeah. and uh, <laughs> I, I really do believe that uh, you know we we are susceptible as humans and intellectuals are no less susceptible to deceitfulness if anything their deceitfulness can be more convoluted and hard to detect because of their intellect. Yes. And so absolutely, I agree with you. It is deception. You know it's from Satan because all Satan does is cause division, mm -hmm. hatred, and murder. And that's what we see are really the ultimate fruits, including cancel culture, which is reinforcing hatred. Yes. I love it. But I thank you so much. And, and Tim, I'm going to send you some notes just so I can, there's some scriptures I wanted to add. I can just add in the comment section just for people to, um, to study. Again, like my, my intent, my hope is that we will take our eyes off of cancel. And every time you see a cancel, every time you get canceled, use that as a check to say, hey, am I focusing on Christ? Am I checking my anchor, so to speak. So if I hear, God forbid, that my friend got canceled and deplatformed and all that kind of stuff, like, man, am I, am I trusting in Christ? Am I really relying on him and him alone? Or am I secretly, you know, wanting to be accepted by the world? And every time the world tells you they don't want to be accepted, they don't want to accept you, just use that as a reminder to go back to his word. So I just, I had some scriptures I was going to add. I can add to the show notes, or maybe I'll just add them in the comment section as well. It would be great. And uh, I hope this conversation was helpful and encouraging to people. And Jason and I, um, we have not canceled each other. We have uh, enjoyed listening to each other. Oh, yeah. And hopefully we will not be canceled for putting this conversation on YouTube. <laughs> Thank you so Close much, not, Jason. I have to find another platform. Who knows? There you go. That's right. All thank right. you, Jason. Hey, thank you, Tim. All right. God bless.